And let's have a look at the birds because they're sitting here or hanging here all patiently in, in their wreath. Let's take this off. Oh dear, how did I fasten that on? There's a lot of twisting and doing. There we go. Right, there are the birds. Let's have a closer look at them. So there's two of them and you can make two from the box as well. They have got um, the white rings around their eyes and uh, on the top of their beak. And um, let's have a look at the back. The reason why they're wobbling around is, is because I haven't fastened them in properly yet because I want to show you how to do that. So that's why they are um, a little bit um, jittery on, on in that ring, but um, that's only because I haven't glued them in yet. So I'm going to sit them here, or try to anyway. Will you stay there? Yes, yes, no, yes. And I'm going to show you now um, two steps on this pre prepared bird, prepared bird. Um, and, and the first step that I'm going to show you now is how to mix the fibers and how to shorten them. So for this, I'm going to go to the overview scene. Right, um, you will have got to this stage by using the template on the back and of course the instructions. And just to prove, this is the template and this is how the bird fits into it. And it's pretty much a perfect, pretty much a perfect match. So that's how, um, how far you would have got. And I am showing you now how to mix the fibers and it's starting on page five of our instructions. So I was telling you earlier that you've got your multi-tone wool mix here and the first thing you need to do is is to split the colors so you're going to split as much of the green out as you can the true green no contamination if you can help it so get um, the green and keep anything else out green then you do the same with um, yellow just get the yellow out yellow and then you're going to do the same with orange. So you've got um, three colors that are uncontaminated and then you've got one that is contaminated that has got um, all the colors still running through it. You might be able to tease out a little bit more of um, the orange and maybe one or the other color. So go, go um, for it if you can. But um, as long as you've got a good amount of, of green and yellow there. And don't worry if the other stuff gets muddled up. Um, that's absolutely fine. There, even teased out a little bit more. So I've got my three separate colors now here, and I've got one that is um, slightly contaminated, exactly how it shows you here in the picture. So now you take a wisp of the green tops you've just separated, which is this one here. So you tease off a wisp like that. Got a wisp here, maybe a bit more. There. Um, and try to sever into slightly shorter lengths. So this is this is where I was. Um, uh, will show you now. This is a, a technique that you might not have done before. There's actually a little bit of yellow in there, so I'm going to take that out. And to shorten the fibers, you have to hold onto them really tight, and you tear them. So th uh, this works best with fewer fibers in your hand. So this time you're actually not um, letting them slither away. You're actually allowing them to be severed, to get shorter. It does, it, you can do it quite well. If, if it's too hard, then just use less fibers. So now what was quite a long patch of fibers has now become quite short. So you can make them quite short, which is of course what we like about the wool butts because they're short fibers and the wool tops tend to be quite long. So I've, I've now got a nice um, short um, batch of wool, short length batch of wool here. And then um, you make sure that you lay them back on top of top in the same direction, which is what you saw me do. So I tear it on top again. I'm not mixing them. I'm keeping them running from side to side rather than uh, crisscrossing them. And, um, and then you are going to felt these down with your fine needle um, onto the underneath of the bird's tail. So there's the bird's tail. You lay them out underneath and you're laying them out in the direction how you imagine the bird's 
feathers will run so the, the obviously the tail feathers will go from side to side as well from the tail end up to the top or the other way around and that is exactly how you lay down the fibers now i'm using a fine needle i'm using a fine twisted needle here but you can also use the fine standard needle um, which is the green colored needle and you're felting this down onto the underneath of the bird's tail so his tummy is here he's pointing he's lying back flat on his back felt these down and color them in if you have got a 42 um, twisted needle then you can use that um, at the very end to fight to make the the um, to really finesse the fineness of the finish at the very end but just use the fine needle right now to felt this down okay so um, then you're going to turn it over and next you're going to do the same with the blue tone tops but this time from the top of the tail so you the reason why we're doing the bottom of the tail first is because when you step into it you push some of the green fibers to come out the other end so that's fine um, so we're going to put this to one side and now we're using the blue top fibers and we're doing the same by mixing them and shortening them. So you can, if you want to, you can um, uh, pick a particular um, vibrant blue or paler blue from here or you can just um, allow the whole blue to get mixed up. This is the only time you're using the blue so you will not have to use any more so you will have plenty of fibers there. And you're tearing them again exactly in the same way as you did before. Got quite a lot there to manage. So I'm tearing the fibers again, shortening them, laying them on top of each other again. And um, if, as, as said, if you need to work in smaller batches, then do so. It's a very lovely, vibrant blue, just what the blue, um, not the bluebirds, just what the lovebirds have got. They've got this. Um, really bright blue peeking out and I have got a colleague at work and she has got um, lovebirds and I've asked her how do these look do they look realistic and she says they're absolutely a great match so then you lay the wool on top of the tail this time so the green is underneath this time you're going on top don't have to use everything and felt that down I'm just going to see if I've got a green needle I can show you the difference is that green yes let's use a, a fine it's actually better with a um, I think it's better with a, a green um, fine needle it's less um, yeah it's just it feel I mean those twisted needles are great because they they work really hard they work they work really well for you like they're hard little efficient little workers but actually the um, the green top needle, the standard needle, is is slightly better because it's not it's it's coloring in the surface more rather than felting the whole thing. So what might happen is that you've got a bit of um, white showing, and you can just cover that up with the blue and felt that down. And important is to know that we're working from the tail up towards the head. Um, because that's exactly how the feathers would be uh, layered so they, they they the next layer of feathers would go over the feathers um, underneath so this is basically now adding the the green uh, sorry the blue on onto the top of the tail now if the blue gets pushed out it doesn't matter so much at least the the top where the blue is is nice and uncontaminated um, and I've still got this is still wool left from the half that I um, split that I've got for the for the for the bird. So at the moment you don't have to worry about this bit here, what that looks like, because you're always overlayering the next color um, on top of that edge. You just have to make sure that the part here, which nothing else will happen to now, is going to look nice and neat. Now we've got the gray to do. Again, you've got a lot of grey there and you're shortening the fibres here as well. It's quite a long fibred one here. Just shorten the fibres. So you add some of the wisps of the shortened grey tops so that they overlap the blue. Note that you will felt the wool down in the direction of how the feathers should run, would run but also 
felting feathers down in order in the order they will appear so this is what i've been talking about so that um they're basically the 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 gray overlays slightly the blue whereas um it's not the other way around so just lay them out you can work in smaller batches so make sure you get a nice wispy um transition here just as you'd imagine the feathers to sort of melt one into another and i think that's part of the success of the lovebird is that you get that lovely transition um going and every lovebird is slightly differently sort of colored some have a bit more of this or the other color so don't worry too much if your if yours shows less gray or more gray um as i say they all are slightly different um then and that's just how nature does things nothing's ever exactly identical so you you have a bit of freedom there not to make an exact carbon copy and then felt this down as well so to smooth out the um, stab marks that it tells you in the instructions as well but i might as well tell you now at the very end when you've finished with your bird you can go over it with a finer needle with um, the 42 twisted needle or even with the crown needles which are new in our um, sortiment so you can buy them from us now they're opal colored so that's a new color we've added into it the other thing you can do is you can actually smooth it out quite a bit by going over it with your hands that makes a lot of difference too to smooth out the colors so now you can see the transition is all happening here and then you're going to um, continue from the front and um, here you are now using the neon green which is a wool bat and um, these need to be teased out into wispy layers so you're now making a lovely transition to that darker green by um, i'm already loving this bird or just just by adding these colors into it so you're now adding the wool down here you will get at some point you will get into a situation where you're not quite sure what's happening on the sides but remember that the wings need to be added yet so there will be um, a large area of the bird will be covered up by the wings that you're adding um, so don't worry too much about the sides at the moment and just add these lovely wispy fibers these lush green zesty fibers onto the bird to cover that lower part and work with really small quantities you do not need to lay a lot on just work with a wispy dusty um dust like a cover of dust um dusting even not a dust <laughs> dusting like like cake dusting that kind of dust dusting i'm talking about and you can you see how beautiful the colors sort of melt into each other it's just i love it love it love it so um, the neon green will also have to cover the side of the bird halfway up because the rest is going to be um, the rest is going to uh, cover the um, co be covered by the by the wings as I said before. But just to cover the white, go over that part here, and the grey area is literally where um, if they if they part their wings, you can see sort of a little bit of grey at the top. So the wings will will cover some of that grey up and we just felt that on all around and i'm just going to see if i go to the next page or this will have probably given you enough of an idea of um yes yeah, so once you've got the um that green part then you take the lighter of the yellow tops take some off so this is something we haven't done yet we haven't mixed the wool yet so you take some of that and you take a little bit of the um, green and now you're going to have to mix it and at the same time shorten the yellow fibers so you're doing this all in one go you're going to make a mix that is um, a nice transition color from the um, that lime green that really vibrant neon green to uh, the next color which will be the yellow and um, so mix that together so now my yellow fibers are the same size same, same length as the green fibers so that um, I, I I'm such a great fan of mixing fibers I absolutely love it this is why we have got this um, service find a fiber you can message us and um, I'm um, and we'll get we'll find the right uh, color combination for you and you can see now that the green fibers of the yellow sort of melt into the um, the green fibers that were down there all by their by themselves 
and you can just felt that down with your fine needle and um, get that bird covered up slowly but surely and the way and which which part goes first and where does it go is all in the instructions all ready for you to follow step by step um, until you have the whole bird covered so I could be covering the whole bird now but I'm not going to because this is basically now a repetition of what I have been doing and I'm going to leave it there but you can see that the colors are coming together of that um, the typical colors of the lovebird which are the the vibrant blue at the at the bottom of the tail with a bit of gray showing and then you've got all the colors um, coming up um, the top until you get to the full color mix here and you can see it all coming together um, and where the where the wings will be sitting later and I'll leave that here for now <laughs> 